I have always wanted a pre-runner. However, in the areas that I've lived, pre-runners don't exist and don't make any sense at all, which gives me the perfect opportunity to do things that I do a lot around here, which is do something completely impractical. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Paradise. What's up guys, I'm Lohan, they come online to the 2007 Silverado, the pre-runner project that we're calling Makaha Runner. We're heading out to the middle of nowhere, Texas to pick up the last piece we need for this project. Over the last few weeks, we got the rear end done. King shocks, hanger shackle kit from CWF off-road and our Deaver U182 leaf springs. And this back end is really, really fun. I ordered this at the beginning of the year. Here we are in October, heading out to go pick up our long travel suspension kit from CWF Off-Road. And also we got a new delivery of vinyl from Vinyl Frog in this week and I wanted to try out one last color and put it up against that satin chrome blue. So we have a glossy pearl blue metallic here on this fender. And then coming over here to the passenger side, I got a larger piece of satin chrome blue and spent some time wrapping this side as well. This is such a crazy color and just even more crazy. We've been playing around with an idea right here, yeah. I think I like it. Well, let me know in the comments below, guys. Should we go with the satin chrome blue or more of a glossy metallic color? Last time that we're gonna see a truck like this, guys. When we're finished here, that tire is gonna be sticking out another four and a half inches. We have tons of goodies, all coming from CWF Off-Road. This is their long travel bolt-on kit for the second generation Silverado. Please don't bust my coconuts too much. Yes, this truck is two-wheel drive. It's almost available in Hawaii when we bought this truck, so it's what we got. There's a lot of components to this. We have fabricated and boxed massive lower control arms, fabricated box, upper control arms, new spindles as well. We also have new tie rod ends, which are about six times larger than the ones that are on the truck right now. And on the springs, looks like we have springs from Eibach. The lower ones are 800 pound spring rates. And then we have some smaller ones that sit on top that are a 500 pound. New lower control arm bushings, extended brake lines, all this fun stuff here, which I'm not even gonna try to name. And last but not least, probably the only thing that's not actually aftermarket going on the truck are AC Delco OEM brand new hubs, courtesy of Finley Auto Parts. So I'm so stoked. And also horribly terrified because things like this don't come with instructions because these are supposed to go to professional shops and not some idiot that makes YouTube videos in his garage. We have from Dirt King, upper arm alignment cams. This truck is notorious for knocking itself constantly out of alignment. These lock it in place. Reservoir mounts for the King Shock reservoirs which mount directly to the top of the shock tower. The most important thing in this box is my free sticker. And once I got to the point of spending my entire life savings, I thought, hey, why stop there? So I got myself a Pro Eagle Jack. Now what this is gonna do is actually enable me to lift a truck high enough to work on it without stacking blocks. The good news is the jack works really, really well. The bad news is I'm an idiot because I'm pretty sure I just put a hole in the wall. Yes, I did. What? Ah, crap. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> Dang it. wasn't at least a little bit worried about my brakes coming off, but I'm happy to report that they came off 
pretty seamlessly. Good old Hawaii rust in there seizing everything together, but my rotors are shot, my brake pads are pretty much gone, and we're replacing our OEM hub. This truck at this point has about 140,000 miles on the chassis, and since we're upgrading all these suspension components, we're gonna go ahead and replace our OEM hub as well. After reaching out to a few folks to actually manufacture these long travel kits, they recommended going back with the OEM AC Delco hub. They said stray away from any aftermarket hubs if you're not going with the race hub and we are not gonna be spending a few thousand dollars on race hubs. So that's what we have right over here, AC Delco OEM hubs. This is where I have to give a massive shout out and a big mahalos to the guys over at Finley Auto Parts that have provided our AC Delco OEM hubs for our 07 Silverado. If you guys need any OEM parts or accessories for your GM vehicles, Definitely go check out Finley Auto Parts. There's a link in the description below. And just for you guys, there's a special promo code down there as well. Big mahalos to the guys over at Finley. Let's go ahead and get this one off because that's been on there for uh, going on 16 years. side completely disassembled now this part of the project i was pretty confident in i didn't have any issues or concerns with pulling this all off it's pretty straightforward now when it comes to reassembly that's where a lot of educated guesses is going to come into play because i personally have never seen a long travel suspension truck in person only via instagram and social media and pictures online that's all the knowledge and information i do have because kits like this don't come with instructions. It's not intended for an idiot in the garage trying to throw this together. So what we're gonna do before we get to this is actually clean up the frame real nice since this is gonna be very visible with the new setup. We have a few cans extra of truck bed coating. We're gonna clean it up, get it sprayed on here, look it real nice and clean. Then we're on to figuring that fun stuff out. Kidding, guys. A few days later, these springs were a little bit of a nightmare getting on these shocks, but they're done. They're done. I didn't do them though. My spring compressor toolkit got me about halfway there. As the spring compressed, it began to arc. I tried it again using a different tool and it got to the point where it just wasn't worth risking it and I didn't want to damage the shock. So I took it to a local shop that had one of the press machines that are mounted on the wall. They like pressed down, put the shock in. Quick 10 minute job, $150 later, they literally charged me 150 bucks to do that. Got our coils on our shocks. Now it's time to figure out how in the world we're gonna be reassembling all this stuff. This lower control arm is enormous. This is massive. And we went ahead and pressed our bushings in, lubricated. And then I also gotta figure out how I'm gonna adjust the height. I think we're gonna get it mounted up on the ground, figure out where it's sitting, and then adjust it from there. I hope that works. Are you kidding me? Those things are massive. Just coming from our stock, torn up, coil over with the Rough Country Spacer at the top, painted blue because I couldn't afford wheel shocks. So I try to mask the stock ones. The iBox springs are actually an upgrade option, which they included because the King coilovers, apparently the coils are out of stock. So we have upgraded 800 pound with a 500 here at the top. Three bolts there holding that in and on the lower side, just resting on the lower control arm. So a lot of this has been trial and error, learning as I go. The lower control arms did not come with new hardware. So I pulled the old hardware out of the stock. Lower control arms, bolts and nuts are in place. I think next what we're gonna do is get somewhat of the upper control arm situated. We also have to assemble our spindle and tie rod ends. And a lot of this hardware, I have no idea where it goes at this point, but uh, we're gonna figure it out.
Tell you what, this would be a lot easier with some instructions, but figuring out as we go, making progress, I hope. The only instructions I actually do have is this photo right here. And uh, doing my best to make it look the same. It looks right, maybe. Uh, uh. We have this billet tie rod from CWF. This is enormous, just like every single thing else in this kit. Just look at the stock tie rod up against this billet one. Also on the end of this, we have a full clevis kit. I think it's called a clevis kit. No idea how this installed, so I took a big crescent wrench, pulled the boot off of the tie rod, and just took a guess. Turn that counterclockwise and that broke loose and uh, that was actually the correct solution. So that's good news. We get the new one in there. I also happened to come across Baja Kits installation instructions for their long travel kits. So I'm following a few of those steps when it comes to the red thread locker and the torque specs. The next thing you're going to do is this good old spindle. We're gonna get the spindle somewhat mounted up on our lower control arm. We're gonna grease those up real nice and keep on going. I really hope I'm using the right hardware. Only time will tell. Tell you what guys, this last several days have been nuts, but we're essentially there. That's right, you and me, right now, we're having it out. All the CWF pieces are installed, the King Shock's there, the reservoir is mounted. We did, however, order some new decals for this because as you can see, that's upside down and backwards. Typically with the CWF kit, they give you hardware to mount it somewhere up over here. I want it on top of the shock tower. I like the, both the aesthetic look, but also getting it up out of the way. Everything else is set and good to go. What we're gonna do next is get our new hub provided by the guys over at Finlay Auto Parts. We're gonna pop it in just like the stock one. So we have our three bolts, stock hardware, are gonna go through our new spindle. Same case if you guys are just replacing it on your stock spindles. Our new ones have a new ABS wire. Everything good to go and get it mounted up on the side. Day 12 of this five hour installation. But the driver's side, we're buttoned up. We're in, we're good. It's time to move all of this mess to the other side of the truck because it's now time to knock out the passenger side. Now this side should be much quicker. Now that we know what hardware goes where, what parts go where, and what order we need to install them in, we should be able to knock out that side real quick. What do you guys think of the wrap? What do you guys really think of the satin chrome blue? Should we actually wrap this thing? I love how bright, vibrant, and disruptive it is, but I love my stock color. The dark mean blue metallic, it's such a beautiful color. Should we actually wrap it or should we try to color match our Fiberworks fenders? I really don't know. Let me know in the comments below. Side by side, we have our stock GM suspension and then our massive CWF long travel. I also have to like zoom out to see everything feeling that one is quite a bit more capable than the other. Hmm. Hmm. Goodbye. side completely taken apart we got a fresh coat of trek bed liner as i knock over all my stuff and uh, we're gonna let this kind of cure up and dry completely before we throw any new parts on it but that's gonna make it look a lot cleaner so while that's drying up we do need to get our lower control arm ready so we have our new bushings here we're gonna get those lubed up pressed in to our new lower control arm here and then replace 
this old junk with this beautiful new stuff. We're in for a fun morning, guys. Let's go. I'm really impressed with this bolt-on kit. The only thing you really have to adjust or modify is for the upper control arms, the mounting location. If you line that guy up on one side, the other side will be off just a fraction, like quarter of an inch or even that. And what we do is stretch this out a little bit. That way the upper control arm can fit in. We have a bolt and two nuts. We take our bolt, put it through there, and then those nuts, we thread them outwards, which is gonna spread each of these two locations enough to fit our upper control arm. And once you cinch those down, it kind of reforms itself correctly. Before a lot of you guys click off of the video, performance brake upgrade packages for the 07 to 13 Silverados. If you know of any, please leave it in the comment in the description below because I'm gonna go ahead and upgrade the brakes while we're at it. Everything's torn apart, plus I want new brakes. Why not? Now, once again, I wanna thank the guys over at Finley Auto Parts for providing our hubs for today's video. My goodness, that looks so good with the CWF fabricated spindle, upper, lower control arm, our brand new King shocks with that reservoir right there with our sticker mounted backwards because we have new decals coming. Ordered those last night, so they're on their way. This tie rod is enormous. It's just gargantuan. It is so freaking massive. And that beautiful stamp plate there at the front. And just look how low that hangs and that's jacked up about four inches and on the stands there on both sides that is just that's just insane look at it just look at it i cannot tell you how long this long travel kit has been bookmarked i have been watching and looking at this kit for i don't know how many years we still have a lot to do with the brakes we have brake lines to extend we have our limit straps to weld on to the frame and bolt it on the lower control arm to actually be back on the road and functional but this part by far was the most tedious i can't believe we got it installed we Figured it out. Stoked. Just so truly stoked and immensely grateful. I bought this truck, Waianae, Hawaii, 10,000 bucks. Picked it up second, third, fourth hand. I have no idea the history of this truck, but when I bought it, this was my dream truck. Never in my life did I ever think that this thing would be to this point. I am so excited and totally beat up and exhausted. So that's gonna do it for today's video, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me till this point in the video. If you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel. Be part of the family and the Ohana. If you guys wanna check out the regular updates and more of the behind the scenes stuff, check out Lone Star Hawaiian on Instagram. We'll see you guys over there. But until our next video with this bad boy, y'all take care. As always, of who we hope, I'm on.